Welcome. It is Build Your Wealth with Trade Your Wealth featuring Jeff Jr. My name is Rusty Humphreys. It is a beautiful day in Phoenix, Arizona, where you are based. Actually, more Scottsdale. Scottsdale, Arizona, our and headquarters. You, and you've got locations all over the country, more growing and expanding all the time. Our newest one opening in Dallas. Dallas? Middle of May. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yep. I used to live in Dallas. I love Dallas. Did you? It's a great place. Yep. So, um, you know, the, the, it's a great organization, Trajan Wealth. This is where you want to build your wealth. Subscribe so you don't miss any of our uh, shows coming up. They come up about, about every Tuesday. Hit the notifications so you get notified every time the shows come out so you can find out some of the great wisdom of Jeff Jr. Now, um, as you continue to expand, I bet there's a question that people ask me all the time, and I'm guessing you get it too. We've talked about it before, but it's a good one to go over again. Broker, fiduciary, mm -hmm. what do you do? What's different? Why do I care? Well, there's a huge difference between broker and fiduciary. I know we've talked about it many times, mm -hmm. but a fiduciary per license has the obligation to put you as the client your interests first over okay. your own. A broker, when you have a brokerage license, you're in the business of selling product. Right. So you only have to make a recommendation that, that's suitable. And oftentimes those suitable recommendations come with high expenses, high fees. So there really is no contest between a fiduciary and a broker. You really want to ensure that you're always working with a fiduciary when it comes to your assets. Okay, so that's important. You know what else is important? Don't stop the camera. You stay right there. Just mm -hmm. say hi to everybody. Uh, ta tell them really quick, um, what is a fiduciary duty? Because uh, the sun is blinding me and by the, if I don't get sunglasses on, I'm going to go blind. So go ahead <laughs> sure. and tell them real fast. Sure. The, the fiduciary duty is simply, it's our duty to place your best interest first. So when we make a recommendation, we have to make a recommendation with your interest in mind, not just not just ours. We just can't sell you a product. And that's what fiduciary means. Okay. <laughs> He's the star of the show. You might as well give him his, his spotlight um, and you deserve it. Now, um, you're, you're talking about that is one, okay, obviously one is, in your opinion, better than the other. Fiduciary is better than the other, without, 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 a without a doubt. Without a doubt, no question. Um, no I question. mean, I mean, the old business was always, you know, the, the old financial services business was always broker. Okay. And that's why it changed, because it really had to change. You know, people had to adapt, and people were really getting taken advantage of. You know, there was high fees with investments. You know, I'll give you an, uh, give you an example. Brokers will sell products with an upfront sales load. So an upfront sales load, a typical upfront sales load is 5.75%. Okay. So what that means is if you invest $100,000, 5,750 comes right off the top. Wow. Right off the top. So you're already starting negative, right? But it's important to know not only are you starting negative and you have to earn interest just to offset that, but that is a compensation that goes to pay the broker. But now what incentive did you give the broker to make you money now. Mm -hmm. You completely took it away. There's right. no incentive. You know, it's like me being a small business owner and paying all of our employees up front and saying, I hope you do a good job now. Hope that's you show what, up next month. I hope you show up next month. Uh -huh. This is not gonna be the case. So there's no incentive for the broker to continue to work with you. And on the fiduciary standpoint, we're paid a percentage. So ultimately, the more that you make, the more that we make. So we're really incentivized to grow your assets and build your portfolio. Okay, if you decide not to go to or trade your wealth, or you're shopping around, mm -hmm. shopping around. How do you know if somebody's a broker or a fiduciary? Uh, you really have to do your due diligence because what I find right now is people ask, are you a fiduciary? And I'd say a lot of or most financial advisors are fiduciaries now, but they're okay. what's called duly registered. So you can be both. So you can be both, okay. which is kind of, uh, it's hard to determine. When you ask, are you a fiduciary? And they say, yes, now what? You really have to know, know, know how to do diligence. And one of the websites that you can go to is finra.org, F-I-N-R-A. Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, and you can check their licenses. Another thing that FINRA.org will do for you is it'll it'll show you if they have any disciplinary history. Oh. So a lot of financial advisors, believe it or not, have filed bankruptcy. Would you want to work with a financial advisor who has filed bankruptcy? Or if they have a financial lien or they have some kind of financial issue, that's disclosed through FINRA.org. Mm -hmm. And it'll show if they're duly registered. It'll show them registered as an investment advisor representative. And it'll also show if they're registered as a broker. Okay. So you can look up my record. I have no bankruptcy. I have no financial disclosure. And I'm registered as an investment advisor representative, which means we're fiduciary only. We're not duly registered in the security space. Not one that's bankruptcy. That's very important. Not, not, not even one bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. Okay, right there. Now, see, what I would do is save a lot of that time. Instead of going to FINRA and checking everything out, I just go to Trajan Wealth. 
Or that too. But that's me. That's you do what you want to do. I would suggest going to Trajan Wealth and just going right to the right people. And and one of the things I know about Jeff is is that he personally works with all of his uh, advisors and and teaches them and trains them and makes sure they are doing the best they possibly can for you. Is that fair to yeah, say? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. And we don't give them discretion just to roam and sell whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, we have investments that we know are going to be well suited. And then we have an investment team and an investment committee that manages those portfolios to make sure they're in tune because a lot of advisors you can't you know a lot of advisors try to be everything to everybody right you know they're servicing their clients they're out marketing they are managing portfolios that's impossible something is going to suffer right and oftentimes with financial advisors the thing that suffers are the portfolios and the continued servicing because they're so busy marketing right so with our team we have a complete team of individuals that range from uh, certified financial analysts analysts to certified financial planners you name it we have a team so it's very much a team approach you're not dealing with a, a father and a son or a, a mother daughter type right. team you know you're not dealing with a mom and a pop type of mm -hmm. shop here and and not only uh, do you do you do the, the wealth side you also do estates now too that's how much uh, Trajan is expanding that, that's right I mean there's really three phases with with your financial life that everybody goes through you've got the accumulation stage and the accumulation stage is where you're working okay. and where you're saving and you're real goal here is just to maximize your 401k and put as much away as you possibly can. And that's where most advisors stop, is the accumulation stage. When you work with advisors, you oftentimes hear, well, let's get you the highest rate of return possible. Right. Well, all that's fine and dandy, that's their sole focus, and that changes as you enter retirement. So you've got the accumulation stage, mm -hmm. and then as you enter retirement, you have the preservation and the distribution phase. This is the time in your life now that you want to preserve those assets because you're no longer working. And then you also are dependent on those assets to distribute and give you income because you're right. not getting a paycheck anymore, right? right? As soon as you stop working, no, no employer is going to pay you. Right. So the distribution phase requires a much more refined approach. And the reason I say that is because if you take too little, your retirement, it's, it's kind of a moot point, right? You mm -hmm. know, what was the point of saving so hard if you're not going to live the kind of lifestyle that you want? Right. Or you might end up taking too much. And if you take too much, you're gonna run out of money before you run out of time. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the distribution phase. And then the third phase is the legacy phase, or what happens to your money if something happens to you. None of us are getting out of here alive, so we wanna face it sooner than later. We want those assets transferred to the spouse. We want those assets transferred to the kids, and we really wanna avoid probate, because probate is a lawsuit with the state. Which the state, is crazy. Which is crazy. Yeah. The, the, they're going to tell you uh, or they're going to tell your family what happens to your money, so we want to avoid probate. Mm -hmm. We want to avoid a state tax. A state tax is a double tax. It's horrible. Horrible. A state tax is a double tax. And then lastly, we want to avoid family conflict. Right. So with a properly structured trust, you now have the ability to determine not only who gets the assets, but really how they get the assets. Mm -hmm. So if you have beneficiaries that are maybe spendthrifts, or maybe they're drug dependent, or maybe they're in a relationship or a marriage that you don't necessarily approve of the other one, that's where a properly structured trust can ensure that these assets get transferred. So Trajan Wealth focuses on all of these, these stages. And, and the thing about this, I don't know about you, but as he's talking, my head's swimming. I, part of this, I don't know what the hell he's, he's talking about. And so I want to, that's why I want to work with a, a team like yours, because you guys handle it. That's right. We have fiduciary advisors. I mean, ultimately, we have fiduciary advisors, and we have estate planning attorneys, and we're going to create a long-term plan that's lasting. Not just sell a certain product, mm -hmm. not just be a sliver. We can create a com complete package that's going to last from the accumulation stage all the way through the rest of your life. Now, if that sounds good to you, it certainly sounds good to me. Go to TrajanWealth.com. That's TrajanWealth.com. Talk to one of uh, Jeff's uh, advisors and find out how they can help you uh, go through all those stages that Jeff was talking about. Hey, we've got a lot more information every single week. You don't want to miss it. Do yourself a favor and hit that subscribe button. It would sure help us as well. Do the notification button too so you get notified every single time a new Build Your Wealth with Trajan Wealth show comes out. Until next time, thank you very much for being here. He's Jeff Jr. I'm Rusty Humphreys and this is Build Your Wealth with Trajan Wealth featuring Jeff Jr. Investment advisory services offered through Trajan Wealth, an SEC-registered investment advisor.